Okay, so from the board, this is a lot of information for question number one, right? And so this is why we did it in class together and we'll be looking at a couple of things. But I want to look at what is weird about this. I told you we are in the era of good feelings. So what has happened? How many parties do we have? Era of good feelings, we only have what? One, because what has happened to the Federalist Party after Hartford? They died. And so you should have seen on this that we have a Republican, a Republican, a Republican, and a Republican, right? And so this led to controversy. It led to controversy because I want us to look at our electoral college numbers. I'm gonna put my calculator on. Hey, who got the most votes? Jackson, Jackson how many did he get? 99, right? Okay, so he got, Jackson got 99. Who was the one who got the next most? Adams, Adams he got what? 84. 84, so plus 84. That gives me 183. Who got the next most? Crawford with 41. And then Clay, 37. So when I add all those numbers together, that gives me 261. To win the electoral college, you must have half plus one, right? So I'm going to divide 261. I'm going to make sure I did my math right. I got 99 plus 84 plus 41 plus 37, right? Mm -hmm. 261. I'm going to divide that in half. That gives me 130.5. You need plus one to win the electoral college. Did anybody have 131.5 to win? No. no. Because of this, because no one had more than 131.5, by the Constitution, it goes because no one got. So this is number two. Explain the issue in the Electoral College. Did Jackson get that 131? No. This is question two. Jackson failed to win the majority vote in the Electoral College. So that is for number two. Jackson failed to win because how much did Jackson have? 99 and he needed 131.5. So by the Constitution, it says that this election, which is the next portion, what did the Constitution state about the predicament? It says when no one wins a clear majority in the Electoral College, this election will go to the House of Representatives. It is by the 12th Amendment that it goes to the House of Representatives. And they choose from the top three candidates. So who are our top three candidates? Jackson, Jackson, Jackson Adams, Adams, and Crawford. These are our top three candidates. So by the Constitution, it says, what does the Constitution say? By the 12th Amendment, it says it goes to the House and they choose from the top three candidates, okay? But looking at this, there's eventually gonna be an issue with Crawford. What happens to Crawford? Stroke. stroke, so can he carry out? Mm -hmm. No, so Crawford is gonna be done because he has a stroke. So really, who is the election between? Jackson. Adams and Jackson, right? But there is now an issue. On number three, it says, how was Clay influential in this election? Let's look at Clay. He's Speaker of the House. That's the answer for number three. Clay is Speaker of the House. And I said on question two that this is going to be thrown into the House. So even though he lost the election, right? He's technically kind of in charge of who wins, right? He's technically in charge of the election he lost. Okay? Um, so, that's what the second part says. What power did he have? He was the, in the position to throw the election to whoever he favored, right? He is in power to throw the election. Can he throw it to himself? No. no. But he has the capacity to throw the election to whoever he sees fit. So the next question says, what issue did Clay have with Jackson? Mm -hmm. He didn't like him. He hated Jackson. And there's a reason why. Um, 
you gotta look at where both of these guys are. Where is Clay coming from? Kentucky. Kentucky. Where is Jackson coming from? This is the West, right? And who is more popular? Is it Clay or is it Jackson? Jackson. Jackson. And he says, if I'm ever going to become president, will it ever happen when he's president? Mm -hmm. No. And so the issue that Clay has with Jackson is that this is his arch rival for control in the West, right? Because they're both from the West. If this guy wins the popular vote in the West, he's going to have it for another four years, right? Will this allow him to win? No. And that is his problem with Jackson. They are both from the West, and they're both trying to compete for those votes. So now, who has more experience looking between Jackson and Quincy Adams? We see him over there, John Quincy. He is um, a former Secretary of State. He developed the Monroe Doctrine. We see over here with Jackson. He's a war hero. He had a controversial Florida campaign. Who has more political experience? John Quincy Adams. Since he's been born, he's been following his dad around. But I want you to look at this. He's aloof and puritanical. Do you all know what that means to be aloof and puritanical? What does it mean to be aloof and puritanical? Do you, okay, when a politician goes out and campaigns, what should they do? The politician walks in this door, what should he do? Greet us, shake our hands, mm -hmm. saying how we're doing, right? Usually if they see a baby, right, they grab the baby, take a photo off, right? Yeah. Aloof means you don't do that. Mm -hmm. Is that an art of a politician? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, sometimes you're in a hallway and you don't want to see someone, so you just pretend they don't exist, right? Oh, yeah. That's being aloof. Some of you have done that before, right? Mm -hmm. New word, right? Aloof. Basically, he's a presidential candidate who doesn't care about his people. Exactly. So who do the people like better, Jackson. Adam or Jackson? Jackson? Jackson. So the he has the popular vote. So who should Clay champion for? Jackson. But if he champions for Jackson, will he ever win the election? No. No. no so who is he going to get behind? Adam. Does this being behind an aloof and puritanical, a very rigid moral guy, will that allow him in the future to win the election? Yes. Yes. So this is where the corrupt bargain comes in. We're going to see on question five. It says, what happened in Clay's and Adams' private meeting? Clay will meet privately with Adams, assuring him, Clay will assure Adams of his what? Support in the house so he wins the election. So that is what's going to happen in the corrupt bargain. Clay will say, look, I am the speaker of the house. I am the power. I could throw the election your way. Wow, that's really nice, right? But do we see his ulterior motives, Clay? Mm -hmm. He doesn't want who to win. Jackson. Because if Jackson wins, will he be able to be president? No. If this guy wins, will he be able to be president? Yes. yes. And so he throws his support behind Adams. The next part, it says who becomes president? Who becomes Adams. president? Adams becomes president. And because of that, do you think Adams owes Clay? Yes. And this is where Clay will get a position. It is seen as the diving board position into the presidency in the future. It's a Secretary of State position. So now, do you think Jackson is going to like this? Yeah. No. Jackson is going to dislike what is going to go on because should he have won that election? Yes. Yes, but technically, did he win? No. All right. 